Assalamu alaikum. My name is Abdul Latif. I reverted to Islam four years ago, alhamdulillah. Um, decided to make it YouTube official with this video um, so I can just share the link with people in the future if I get asked. Always get asked at very awkward times um, or brief times. So, alhamdulillah, um, decided to take this opportunity to record my story. All my friends were Catholic, my street that I grew up in and all the kids and families I played with, majority of them were Catholic, attended Sunday school. When I visited my family in the country, went to Sunday school as a kid growing up, alhamdulillah, it was, it was a very good childhood and that's where my religion journey started. We learnt religion in school, went through the processes uh, and the stages in Catholicism, but never never truly resonated never truly resonated and emotionally connected with uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through through Christianity um, but never really questioned it either it was just the environment that I was brought up in and had no reason to really question it at that time the friends and community the family everything was based around catholicism alhamdulillah and it's, it's what my mum grew up with as a religion um, so it's one of those ones that's just passed down through family moving on in life um, graduating from high school sort of because it wasn't in that environment anymore stopped attending church because you didn't have to because it wasn't in that environment maybe just like most australians um, during those key times like Easter, Christmas, and maybe the occasional um, mass, depending on family. So it's very family driven. Um, and never again, even during university in those early years, questioned it. It was also during this time where I started having started having family difficulties and family trauma, which at the time I didn't really sort of acknowledge as something which would impact me, just kept living my my everyday life. But unconsciously and over time, over years actually, it started to wear down um, and started bringing on my own sort of sadness and darkness in my life and started trying to resolve it in really unhealthy ways um, and had unhealthy relationships and things which, yeah, not the most proud of in my life. But it was the only way that I knew for myself to cope with these difficulties. And they were really tough. And this lasted over quite some time and started getting really strong relationships with these coping mechanisms. And I guess it got to the point where because they're so unhealthy, where they, while they did, I guess, cover or band-aid the pain that I was feeling, it started having the reverse effect. It, it wasn't covering, it wasn't band-aiding, it wasn't helping anymore. I didn't truly understand this or acknowledge this or even truly appreciate the damage that I was doing to myself until maybe I was around third, fourth year of university. I did a trip to Indonesia. I had traveled to Indonesia before, but not like this. So I joined a non-for-profit organization who was doing health and sanitation work in Jakarta. And it was my first time in the capital city. I had gone to Bali like most Australians and done surfing all, all throughout Bali, but never been to, to West Java. And I went and we, we partnered up with locals in a local school and we're doing a health and sanitation project. And alhamdulillah, it was really rewarding uh, the people were incredible. It was my first time uh, meeting Javanese people and didn't really sort of think too much about the whole experience other than, yeah, it was an enjoyable experience. I enjoyed using my professional skills and doing community work. And we left and we had plans to come back. Now, obviously Islam being the, the majority of re religion in Indonesia, especially in West Java, it's very visible everywhere, the Adhan. I didn't actually like consciously think about the Adhan. I didn't consciously think about the Muslims that we were working with. It was just normal life. And I returned back to Perth and life continued as is and was in this vicious, painful circle that I was in. 
and we returned maybe like six months, six months after on this trip is when subhanAllah, when everything started to change. And maybe it was because I was in such a dark, low spot in my life at the time that my heart began to open. It was searching. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He guides and He truly guided me. And this is where it all started, alhamdulillah. So on this trip, the Muslims, the local Muslims that we were working with, they were very confident and they're about the same age as myself. And there was two particular sisters who uh, I will remember forever, alhamdulillah, so confident in who they are and their identity and their religion. On the first day that we were there and we were doing some group team activity, they said, just out of the blue, did not ask them any questions or anything like that. They, they grabbed, they grabbed at the hijab and they said, do you know what this is? And I goes, and kind of took me by surprise. And, uh, I responded like with what I knew at the time. So I could think of nuns and sisters. So I was like, it's a veil, right? It's a veil. They're like, that's correct. That's correct. It's a, it's a veil. It's a hijab. Do you know why we wear it? And I was again, I was bit taken back and I said not not too sure and they were like it's to protect to protect our it's like our modesty to protect our hair and our beauty from all all those around us when we're out in public something along those lines right and I was like okay that's nice alhamdulillah that's that's really nice and kind of just moved on later that day they said something which really really hit me they said just again completely out of the blue they said do you know that heaven, Jannah, lies at the feet of your mother? And I was, I was like, wow, that's, that's really beautiful. That's really beautiful. And they said, did you know that this is their understanding? They said, did you know that that mother represents all women? Meaning that all women in this life, because they can all be mothers at one point in their life, inshallah. Heaven is at their feet, meaning you have to treat with them. You have to treat them with such respect. I was completely blown away. I was honestly overwhelmed with motions. They had no idea what was happening in my personal life and the trauma that I had experienced and the pain that I was feeling. And a lot of it had to do with the treatment of women in my life and what I had witnessed and to hear a religion speak of how they respect and treat women in such a way and how they protect their beauty from those around them. SubhanAllah, it was at this point, the veil had been removed from my eyes, my heart, and I began to really question what is Islam? You know, I obviously had been in the country before I had, you know, mixed with Muslims before, but never questioned anything about the religion. And this shock that it sent me in terms of questioning everything and questioning how it made me feel to know that there is a group of people out there who treat women this way. Alhamdulillah, it was, it was a profound moment. And it was from this moment forward that then unconsciously I started to like, the events played everywhere in Jakarta that I started like hearing the event, not just like it was background noise. Like before it was just noise and it was like just noise over the megaphone. Right. But now it was something else. It was like, what is this sound? Is this melody? It's very peaceful sounding. And I became curious to know what does it mean? I began curious to know like more about the hijab and more about what was shared to me in regards to heaven laying at the feet of your mother and moved on with that trip that I had in uh, West Java, completed our work, made friendships, alhamdulillah. I left feeling a little bit like a little bit healing, like a, my, the pain that I had in my heart, I started feeling like it was healed and I took that piece of sort of healing and peacefulness and calmness and left. Didn't at the time when I first got back to, to Australia, that I didn't question it. I kind of just took it and I was a little bit curious, but just, it was too different for me. Right. So I moved on, but took that and took that healing and thought, ah, I'm better now. 
you know, alhamdulillah. Obviously at the time I wasn't saying alhamdulillah and moved on and moved on with my life and slowly the pain started coming back. The emptiness started coming back and I started falling back into my usual coping mechanisms and it got to a really low point in a very quick time because I had realized at this point when I had that healing and I had that feeling of like, subhanAllah, this is lifted my my energy my my mental health my physical health just everything was oh wow i didn't realize i was feeling i wasn't in this state before and i was removed out of it so i realized what i was actually in when i was removed out of that in my time in indonesia and when i fell back into that state that's when i really hit a low point and i while i was in denial at the start while I was in denial at the start and I did not want to acknowledge that the reason why I was feeling a sense of peacefulness just a little bit at the time was because of this religion called Islam. I, I went back to it. I was like, this is what's going to heal me. I, I, well, this is what made me feel good. This is what bring calmness to my heart. Then I'm going to look a little bit more into it. So I went onto YouTube and looking at videos and listening to videos, just simple things at the start, like the call to prayer, the adhan, listening to that, finding out what it means and looking into the hijab and why do sisters wear the hijab, the modesty, the respect behind women in Islam, starting to listen to the Quran as well. Very, very nervous about that. I was like, I was a bit scared to be honest at the start about how how that was going to impact me or affect me. And I didn't necessarily want to be fully sort of like, I had this like idea in my head, like if I listen to the Quran, that's it, you know? And I was scared about my preconceived ideas from the media of what Islam was. So I didn't jump onto listening to the Quran straight away, but I listened to other videos and lectures. And one particular sister who I listened to who began to really, really resonate with myself was uh, Sister Yasmin Mujahid. SubhanAllah, I used to lay up at night and listen, listen to her and it was the impact it had and the healing it had onto me, onto my heart. It was, it was profound. But this was about a period over two, three months and I was still in complete denial. I was listening to this, understanding this, and taking how it made me feel and then just moving on, just denial, just not acknowledging it. It was too much, too different, too strange for me. So let's take what it can, it can heal me and move on. And I kept doing that, yeah, for quite a significant period of time to the point where I started reflecting and thinking about my own religion, about being brought up as a Catholic, being brought up in Christianity and beginning to feel like, why, why is it that I'm resonating and I'm having this emotional connection, this understanding with just the concepts within Islam and the way in which people are practicing it? Why, why is it that I can't get that emotional? And I started questioning and I, I never truly questioned Christianity at, until this point. Other, other than I just had some confusion there. And it was from this point where I started taking knowledge more seriously in regards to listening more and making it a daily occurrence and, and diving in deeper to the people who I started resonating with. And alhamdulillah, it really started to, to, to change from this point forward. It was also around, it was also around this time where I started wanting to, I had met these Muslims in Indonesia and I was starting to want to meet Muslims where I was from, where I lived here in Australia. So I started, you know, Googling and Facebook and I ended up finding a, a Facebook group uh, for my university, the MSA for my university and started kind of like low key st stalking them and seeing what events they had coming up, started looking at the photos they were posting and the type of people that were attending these events. And, you know, they're strange. They're going to be like my friends over in Indonesia or, you know, you're going to be like the, how the media depicts them. Um, 
And I did that for a while until I built up enough courage to attend, to attend an event. And the first event, it wasn't, I guess, like a, a single day event. They were participating in a charity run and they had advertised that they are going to be putting a running team together. And I was, you know, my sporting background, so that this is a perfect way for myself to, you know, meet some Muslims, local to where I live. And I even offered to actually do some, you know, coaching. I was very heavy into my sport. Um, so I offered that and started that, alhamdulillah. And um, yeah, began my journey in meeting Muslims where I live, seeing how they practice, seeing how they speak, seeing how they live their life. SubhanAllah, alhamdulillah. It was, again, just kept reaffirming like the, 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 the Muslims I met in Indonesia, what they were sharing, the way I was feeling, alhamdulillah, it was all starting to begin to click together. I'm going to share two stories that had a profound impact on myself at this particular time. And it truly goes to show, at least for myself, that the best form of da'wah is how you treat people and how you act as Muslims to, to anyone and just be in society. There was one brother who I had no idea of at the time, never seen, never met before, never heard his name. And one night I get a message from him. Previously th that evening, I was at university doing some the late night study and I get home and receive this message from this brother. And he says, is this so-and-so, do you study here? And I go, yes, yes. And he goes, I have your credit card, your bank card. And I go, start freaking out, started getting nervous and uh, go to my wallet double check and yeah, my bank card's not there. So I go back to my phone and message this brother and say, yeah, that's me, that's my card, um, are you there? And by this time, like it must be like 10 o'clock at night, 10 p.m. at night, 11, it's late. And he goes, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy to stay here. Um, yeah, you can come in and pick it up, that's fine. I'm just st stunned, firstly. Um, my head, most people would have grabbed that card and pay wave and just started using it or just seen it and ignored it and done nothing about it. But subhanAllah, this brother was placed at this particular time to cross paths with me, subhanAllah, and actually became one of, one of my closest friends for a quite a long period of time until he left the city that I live in. And um, yeah, he stayed there. It's about a 30 minute drive, subhanAllah. So he stayed there happily waiting in the car park. I meet him, I was struggling to pronounce his name and uh, asked him how to pronounce his name. Yeah, met him, got his details off him. I was really just a little bit shocked to know that there are people out there like this around my age at university who, you know, act of kindness. And his name kind of gave it away that, you know, he was Arab or a Muslim. He had an Arab name and uh, wanted to know more about where he's from. And yeah, he just gave some brief details. He was from Tunisia and um, alhamdulillah, he ended up becoming a very close friend and alhamdulillah, a very important person in my journey. Another story, the other story that played a really important, one of the other stories that played a really important role was a sister. I remember meeting in the library at the university. Um, we were organizing for that charity run and I was going to be the coach. Um, so I wanted to, to meet this particular person. And um, this person, subhanAllah, like I'd never heard of someone speak about something so painful, so traumatic and say, she supplicated saying Alhamdulillah. And, you know, she had no idea at the time that, you know, I had any knowledge of Islam and what these supplications mean. Um, and she mentioned that her father had passed away only recently. And I remember just being like, my energy just completely changed. And after she mentioned her father passing away, she said, Alhamdulillah. And I remember just almost, almost breaking into tears, just being just shocked. I mean, she, she, again, she had no idea I knew what it meant kind of ended the meeting short and I drove, not home, but I drove to the beach, just parked up at the, the parking lot. And I remember just crying. I remember just almost like, like the pain that I was feeling just coming, just all coming out of me, just in absolute shock that someone, a human 
could react to such a painful, traumatic thing to say, Alhamdulillah, all praise is to God for such, such a thing, subhanAllah. And these people, these Muslims, just started coming into my life and Alhamdulillah having a, a beautiful impact upon me. If anything resonated with you, or if you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you. Please use the comment section. If the video you feel like would uh, resonate with anyone, please share with them. If you haven't already, subscribe to receive notifications and I'll see you in my next revert video.